It's so exciting to have you here with us on this incredible topic that I've been so excited to feature as part of our Remax Business Builder Series. My name is Michelle Hoyt. I am Manager of Education and Development for Remax Integra. We are an independent region of Remax, which is Midwest, New England, Ontario Atlantic, Europe. However, we officially welcome all of you from all the company-owned regions and other independent regions that are tuning in. We are one big global family, we're Remax. So we are just thrilled to have to be here and to host all of you. We are broadcasting live on the Remax Integra US Facebook page. So hello, Facebook. We are also on Zoom, as you can see. Those of you that are on Zoom, please type in your questions in the chat box or Q&A box. Our panelists want to hear from you, as do I. So we are going to get this kicked off really quick. So today we are talking about this unbelievably uber popular topic called SEO and Google for real estate. Google is mysterious. Google is everything. Google can be frustrating sometimes. None of us really have all the answers, but we have some experts here on this panel that are going to help you take a better approach to it, be more strategic about it, and just have a general better understanding of how Google works. More importantly, how you as a real estate professional, what you should be doing and how you can get found even in organic search. It doesn't take to you emptying your entire savings account to show up on Google. There are some really key things that you can do for free. And we have the right people to help you with that. I'm gonna go ahead and have you meet our panelists. And again, officially welcome to the Remax Business Builder Series. We're talking SEO and Google for real estate. So I'm gonna go ahead and have you meet the panelists. We're gonna start with James. James, please introduce yourself. Tell all everyone right. all about you, your background, your history with Remax, any hidden talents, uh, anything that you want everyone to know. <laughs> Fun. Good morning, everybody. My name is James. I am the VP of Marketing and Media Strategies for the brand. Um, and I've actually grown up in real estate. So I've started off in home building, land development. I've been in marketing in this digital space for all of that time as well. So I'm in the perfect spot to take that passion for real estate and serving customers with a lot of the digital marketing side. Um, I've been with the brand twice now. So I did take a little stint in technology, realized I am a user of technology, didn't necessarily like working in it. Um, but I've been in an FDC role, we were called business coaches at the time. I've been around the brand um, and I've got a talented team, Josh being one of them, of directors and people working on all the consumer advertising that we do. So we work closely with the Integra region on the campaigns and what you see for the consumer, as well as all the internal tools um, with Megaphone and um, Hustle and Photofy and all these others, and also recruiting, retention, marketing, franchise sales marketing. So I'm in a good crossroads of a lot of cool things that we're doing as a brand. Um, I think talents I'll save to the end. I've got a kind of fun eye thing I might show you guys on something I can do. Might make you smell that all the way to the end. Oh, fun. don't tease us like that. Can you, <laughs> Gotta keep everybody to the end. Yeah, can you move your chair a little bit and show everybody where you are? Yeah, so I'm actually at headquarters and here is a view Ooh. if you see look that. Nice, look at the mountain. Colorado Rocky Day. It's great. Very nice here today. I've actually been in the Midwest in Iowa for, for the pandemic, so it's nice to be home for a few days. <laughs> well, James, thank you so much, and we are so grateful for you to share your expertise today. Everyone, please meet Josh Culver. Josh, tell everyone all about yourself. Hello, everybody. Very excited to be here, and thanks, Michelle, for, for coordinating this. Um, a little bit about me. I've been doing digital marketing for about 12 years and, and with a heavy focus on SEO. I actually started with a, with an agency here in Denver um, that, that focused on SEO. My, my official title is uh, Executive Director of, of Integrated Marketing, but really helping everybody across the brand uh, focus on consumers, um, how all of our digital media kind of works together to, to ideally you know, make sure that we're top of mind in that, in that consideration funnel. Um, again, uh, my history is I started with an SEO um, company here several years ago, um, and then went to another agency that was focused on franchise marketing. So really that, that local market activation and, and being present in the local market and how a big brand can, can help people in the ground, on the ground. So uh, really excited to be here, really excited to, to talk through um, 
it's it's funny because Google's a complicated topic, even though everyone Googles every day. They 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 use it all the time and they're and they're very familiar with it. So um, there's a lot of there's a lot of levels and it and it feels tangible, but then there's to your point, Michelle, there's a lot behind the scenes. I gotta brag him up real quick because he's so humble. I love sharing the story and he probably gets tired of me sharing. <laughs> When we had the chance, when I started growing a team and got promoted to the role, I was looking for Josh and literally like 500 resumes and interviews and all of that later, we found him and then fought to get him and super excited and what he's been able to do with our digital efforts and building those relationships with Facebook and Google and others and taking us just continue to modernize the brand. Hats off to him and the team he's building and I just can't brag him up enough. So thank you, Josh. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. That's very cool. Thank you. I love that. You know, everyone wants to know about hidden talents. Uh, so you may have to reveal that at some point during this session. I'll try, I'll try and think of one. Yes, exactly. Especially, hey, Stacy. shout out to Stacy in Kentucky. All right. So again, hello, everyone on Facebook, everyone on Zoom. I see a lot of you asking about the recording. Yes, this is being recording. It recorded. It will be shared with those of you that registered on Zoom. It will also be made public on the Remax Integra U.S. YouTube channel. So it will be out there for sure. All right. So James, that's a great lead into our next question. Can you talk a little bit about this? I get asked this all the time as a trainer, who's doing marketing at the world headquarters? Can you talk a little bit about the makeup of the marketing team there, you know, from a high level, yeah. um, you know, just what the team's like, how you're, uh, you're structured and how you're categorized and your responsibilities? Yep, absolutely. So I've got a dream team um, working hard on this, right? So Josh is our integrated marketing lead. So all really connecting the digital side with our traditional media, but also all of the other disciplines of marketing and creative and media. Um, and then he's got a team that, uh, under him that works there. We've got another integrated or uh, executive director of marketing. Her focus is really on product marketing. So a lot of the new things are rolling out with new technologies that we're buying or really integrating with. Um, as well as recruiting and retention marketing and franchise sales marketing. I have a media director. So we manage a national media plan as well as 172 local markets that we customize and tailor based off competition, consumer behaviors, those insights. So there's, as you imagine, one plan is enough, let alone 172 of those and keeping up with that. And then I also have a creative director and an associate creative director that really is the talent of the copywriters, the designers, all of those. We have a media agency um, that we just onboarded. We used to have two, we've got one now. Um, they do all of our paid media efforts. We have a um, branding agency as well that helps with the campaign message. We're close with our VP communications and her team. You've got social media, the internal external cons and how that comes together. And then we really work closely with the region development teams to then take that out to the network. Um, everyone is our customer, it's very varied. Um, and what we do is instead of you know, rolling something out for an annual campaign, marketing is really about looking at it often. So the team's looking at this stuff weekly, daily, optimizing every 10 to 14 days, making sure that what we put out in the marketplace is resonating with the consumer, is it resonating, whatever that purpose is, right? Some marketing is about driving awareness. Some might be lower funnel tactics on maybe that low, more towards consideration or, you know, the act of buying and selling or lead gen or app downloads or whatever that might be. So it's a lot of uh, different moving parts and pieces and levers and data that we're looking at. Yeah, just to piggyback off that, I mean, that's what makes it so exciting to be, at least for, for me, and I think a lot of others, uh, exciting to be with Remax right now, right? Because we, we have all these new products that, that we're really excited about that we've acquired that, that are available to the network, which is exciting to, to tell that story. Um, we have a really strong team, as, as James mentioned, between, between creative, between media, um, and that product marketing piece, and then also just all the changes that are always happening in digital. I know, I know we'll talk a lot about it today, but there's so much that, that changes all the time, even from year to year. So staying on top of those trends, making sure that we're doing right by, you know, hard-earned media dollars and, and staying in front of the consumer, it's, it's, it's never boring. Yep. Well, I'd be rude to say, too, we have... 200 technologists between the product IT side of the house as well that's part of the company that's we work closely with them as well on how do these other systems that might not be marketing related but definitely have an impact such as websites landing pages so there's a lot of cross-pollination and connection that's happening and I just think with where you know when we used to daydream 10 years ago about if I could do this and track someone across all these different channels and know what they are and who they are we're there guys, like this is what's great about it. So now how do we leverage that? 
but more importantly, it makes sense for an agent. They're busy. Agents and team leaders and team members and offices, you guys are busy building and connecting with, with consumers. You're not expected to be marketing pros and become sure. you know, the 20 years of history that we've built in our careers. That's what we're trying to simplify. Some cases automate as much as we can, um, whether that's task, whether that's true automation, but just ways that we can help enhance the value prop and all the things that we have for all of you. Well, we're very thankful for everything that all of you do. I mean, I see those Remax.com commercials on my TV every day, <laughs> and uh, and that's that's very cool. Um, so again, thanks to everyone for joining us. I see a lot of great comments coming to us from all over Canada, all over the U.S., so thanks, everyone. Now, Josh has an incredible presentation to share with all of you in just a moment. Before we get into that, though, you know, we all have to start somewhere. I, I personally, I couldn't tell you the date or the time or where I was when I first heard the term SEO, but we're going to take a, a dive into that with both James and Josh. Now, they're both obviously marketing experts, and uh, that starts with their education, that starts with experience, but for, let's start with you on this one, Josh. When, how did you first learn about SEO in particular? Like, what was your, could you pinpoint when you were first aware of it? And then more, um, more importantly, how did you start? narrowing your focus to real estate? <laughs> no, that's a great question. I, I don't remember. It was it was probably 10 or 15 years ago where, you know, you just started using Google and then it kind of led me to the question of like, well, how how do they rank some of these sites? How does something come up higher than, than something else? And that's a whole rabbit hole that just sent me down. And there's, there's so much that's changed even in the last 10 years, right? Of making sure you have a lot of keywords and having some of the links back and, and all the layers that have continued to make it more complex with mobile and, and where you're actually at. Um, and then as it becomes to real estate, right? There's, there's so many uh, people in the space. So how do we as a big brand leverage, leverage the knowledge that we have and, and help hopefully educate the network, but even to James's point earlier is, is make some of that stuff turnkey because you guys, you guys have enough on your plate. So if there's things that we can do to make it a lot easier for you, even if it's just running you through like a presentation like this, if it's something that's more hands-on, um, always want to make it uh, tangible and, and useful for you all. That sounds good. How about you, James? What was your first ever experience with SEO? Mine was back in my home building days. We were building communities and we had specific homes and we knew how they lived and what we were building. So it was trying to figure out when we started building websites, but then when we had these engines that were crawling and this concept of a spider and it was like, what, right? And we were so keyword focused. And the reality of the advantage of, back, of SEO is backlinks. It's when you can really, for me, it was, I want to say it was like early 2000s. We had just launched this. We went into our 27th state at the time and, and a light bulb went off for me. It was not about the keyword. It was not about the technical piece and all of the stuff we tend to get focused on. It ultimately was about a consumer experience. What is a consumer looking for? So easy example, condos for sale. There's an ad about condos for sale. Then I need to send them to a page, not my homepage, not my Facebook page, but a page about condos for sale. And then having a conversion point for that as well. And when I started looking at it from a human perspective, and not trying to game the system that used to happen back in the day or focusing on all of the keyword pieces and really thought about if I was talking to a human being about their life, their family, their need, right? How do I make that connection? And that's when it started to really click and I started seeing some really great results um, where at the time it was so new and it was like, ah, eh, it's this thing. Is it really going to stick around? Well, now here we are decades later and it's a very core piece of what we do and how we connect with people. But now it's also the challenge, right? We're highly regulated. Fair housing in the US is a thing. You can't, uh, you never want to segment to exclude, but segmenting for relevancy is one is definitely appropriate. So it's like, how do you start to evolve this? And that's where we then had to look at it. Not everybody's the same. Not everybody's a buyer seller. Not everybody's ready to do it today. So now how do we look at the two years of research, whether it's family formation, family separation, job transfers, how do we get to the active buyers and sellers and how do we build that relationship for the 10 plus years in between deals? That's when it all started to change. Oh, your sound went out. Not sure what happened there. Uh-oh. Take that a little bit further. I mean, yeah. even with what James was saying, I mean, one of the biggest things with Google too is, is um, just trying to make sense of all the things that realtors do, other businesses do offline, 
and 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 making sense of it online, right? So James kind of talked about all of all of those pieces already. So it's just making sure a lot of that stuff is concise. It's it's all in the same place and making sense of it so it makes sense to to a consumer when they're searching online. Thank you so much. So Josh, let's start with you on this one. What are some of the common myths that you hear from brokers and agents about SEO and Google in general? And why do you think most are intimidated by it? Well, I, I think, I, I don't know about the, the misconceptions. The thing I always hear is why, why aren't I ranked number one? Like, why don't I come in on the first page? And I think everybody, you know, as we've gotten more involved using search engines and using Google on a, on a frequent basis, I think that's one where, you know, people can do it themselves. They can, they can search themselves. So they're like, well, why aren't I right there? I'm, I'm searching for me. Why, why can't I see it? And, and so we'll talk about some of those factors that they go into ranking. That's always changing. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about that stuff today. I would say that's, that's the number one question, but um, you know, as you mentioned earlier, Michelle is, is instead of paying for it, which, which is kind of considered the, the sprint SEO is the marathon and, and it does take a little bit of work and, and some upkeep. Um, hopefully it's a little bit more, it's like an investment, right? A little bit, a little bit more upfront and then a little bit uh, less time in terms of upkeep and a little bit more maintenance mode after that. Um, but hopefully some of the things that we'll walk through today will, will help people get started on the path. Well, thanks. I hear those same uh, statements as well. <laughs> as, right. Uh, why am I not showing up? James? Uh, Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay. I hear you. Uh, what <laughs> okay. are some of the common myths that you hear and what, what do you think the intimidation factor really is about SEO? I think that there's a expectation that once you figure it out, it's a silver bullet and it's done. The problem is it's constantly changing. I mean, when you think about, I hear oftentimes, why does this house not list on page one of results compared to X, Y, Z? Um, even if you get there, it changes. Like there's so much volume, so much content that is being created on a daily basis and an hourly basis that is flooding the web and flooding these search engines. It's a lot to keep up with. And so if you focus only on SEO from that perspective, you are going to frustrate yourself to the nth degree. Advertising is that short-term play. SEO, like Josh said, is that sprint or is that um, marathon. But it's at the end of the day, if you focus on the consumer experience and quality content and something that's gonna resonate, that's where you get those backlinks. So what I mean by that for an agent is, instead of worrying about does one, two, three Main Street rank, you can run ads for that all day long. What you need to just start doing is creating content about the communities that that home is in or neighborhoods or places opening up or how you might be able to serve a customer different than I'm an agent and I have a home for sale and it's X price and X number of bedrooms and bathrooms. <clears throat> Talk about how the home lives. Talk about where it's at, right? And when you put that content out there and load it in to your websites and think about your social channels and backlinking to your website and putting on your YouTube channel, backlinking to your website, putting it out a fun piece of content that you post organically, linking to another channel, backlinking to your website. That is all going to start to help you with your SEO. And then an agent side there is also thinking when you load a video or a photo, a lot of times they just do it quickly. The image is IMG75534. Well, that doesn't mean anything. Remember the, the consumer won't care because they'll see the photo, but the computers, these engines that crawl these sites, if IMG745 was condos for sale and you labeled it as condos for sale, that likely is gonna be stuff that's gonna help with ranking. It's gonna help so these computers that are trying to make sense of this information to serve the right content to a customer, as well as how consumers engage with your content that's where it kind of comes together and the magic starts to happen. Just a little bit of pause. What is it that I'm trying to convey? What am I wanting someone to take away from this? And that's where I think some of the misunderstandings of the silver bullet. And once I do it once, it's forever. It constantly is changing. Yeah. And just to piggyback off of what James is talking about, I would say the other big thing is consistency, right? If you're using... Um, to use James' example, right? If you're going to use 123 Main Street, using 123 main and then st period is street and if that's what you're going to use use it all the time um, make sure that your office or, or that the phone number that you're using is the same all the time how you're putting your name is the same all the time because what what that helps eliminate and because google doesn't yet know the difference might might in the near future but he doesn't yet know the difference right between st and street it's getting better it's improving, but as of right now, if you make that if you make that easier and you're more consistent with all of yours, with all of your outgoing pieces, with all of your naming, that'll make it easier to be consistent and then and then basically help with those rankings and, and to James's point, those backlinks. 
No, Josh. Josh, I have asked something real quick. Yeah, Josh sure. just said something that I get fired up about. <laughs> Name, address, phone. That is a real thing. Yeah. Yep. That consistency that he just said is so critical. And when I travel around and I talk to a lot of you, this is the funny thing, right? You started off in Facebook, you have a page and it might be you know, your Remax name, it could be just your, your name or uh, uh, however you're setting that up. But then all of a sudden these new technologies or new platforms or social channels, the nephew, the friend, the consultant sets it up for you and it's a different name. If, you're, if you think about your Zillow pages, your Realtor.com pages, your personal channels, your website pages and everything, make sure that that name, address, phone, down to the punctuation, the spacing, if you're hyphenated, not hyphenated, make it all consistent. That is gonna help. So when somebody starts searching for you, starts searching for your content, you will start to dominate page one of those search results. If you have those inconsistencies, consumers might get it, but the computers that are crawling this content, they don't understand. Right. So they say, hey, there's a, there's a conflict here. Let's not worry about it. But when they start seeing a lot of similarity, it starts to improve your rankings in that long-term SEO that you're all trying to build. I, I feel like I cannot har nod so hard enough. Understand. No, that's great. Josh, this would be a great time to transition into your presentation. Yeah, sure. So let's uh, have you take it away. And uh, I do see some questions coming in. I promise you there's a pretty good chance Josh will answer those. Kylie, I see your question. Thank you. Uh, we, if we don't, we will come right back to that. I mean, I can, I can start off with that first one, or one from Kyle that he was asking, do SEO and Google Ads uh, mingle together, yeah. or are they two separate entities? Uh, that, that one, if you're asking oh. Google, they would say no. Uh, I think anyone who has any experience with this would say, yeah, there's usually a little bit of a trend. I mean, you've even seen it over the last five, six years where, where it's getting harder and harder to tell what's an actual ad versus what looks like the, the organic results. So um, I think the short answer from Google is no, but I don't think it hurts. Thank you. All right. So with that, I'll go ahead and, and get in. I'm, I'm, you should be seeing the, the driving local engagement um, screen here, state of search, right? Can you guys give me a thumbs up if you're seeing it? Yes, we're seeing it. All right, perfect. All right. Um, so yeah, just going over real quick. I know we've talked a lot about uh, some of these things already, and, and Michelle's done a great job with, with lining us up with some great thought starters and, and questions. Um, so we've talked a little bit about this uh, starting off already of, of where we are in search and, and how customers start, start looking for brands and start engaging with them. Um, the and then I'll, we'll get into the piece that Google My Business plays. Um, and then, you know, as, as Michelle said earlier, you know, if you, if you do want to end up spending dollars, there's, there's places that you can go for that, Megaphone being one of them. We'll talk on that real lightly. But um, the majority of this will be spent just about setting up Google My Business and, and making sure it's, it's, to James's point earlier, consistent and, and across the board. So um, consumers are changing. Um, that is... The most obvious statement I can make today. 97% um, of people learn about a local business online. That's where they start their search. I think, you know, anecdotally, I think we've seen more engagement on our websites and, and through our pages in the time of coronavirus, right? I think more people are, are doing their searches and, and starting um, with that mobile device before they go out and, and do some of that exploring. Um, and it's true in real estate. Um, you we see that 48% of, of people um, start doing searches uh, for, for mobile searches are in the real estate. Now it's a little bit lower than like food and beverage. Um, some of those, you know, news and media lifestyle. But when you think about, you know, the, how big of a purchase a home is, um, that's not too surprising that it's a little bit behind those, but it's the fact that it's above entertainment and, and banking is, is huge. That's a huge opportunity uh, for everyone in our business. Um, so I'm going to try and play a quick video here of, of kind of where Google is going with some of this and how they think about this. I uh, hope we get plays. I know sometimes the Zoom video can be a little bit interesting, but I can give you a recap afterwards. Oop. I don't know if the audio is coming through. I'm not hearing anything. Okay. It's, the good news is it's just music. W would we be dancing right now? 100%. <laughs> <laughs> It's the theme song. We can hum. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, you don't want me to sing through this. <laughs> we would lose a lot of people. <laughs> hey, I just bought a blow dryer myself. <laughs> Started your search online, did. didn't you? I yeah, did. I'm trying to find your problem. 
<laughs> the age of DIY. Hey, I hear a sound. I think I'm going to go jump in and diagnose myself with broken mechanic. <laughs> I can figure it out on YouTube. Well, now I really want to watch it with music. <laughs> I can send it after this. <laughs> we'll include this, everyone, this uh, right. video link. So what are we looking at overall here? So overall, it's, um, well, it's, well, this isn't, you can tell this is a little dated, uh, just with the people all together. Um, what you're seeing, though, is, is Google's focus on moments, right, and, and how those moments, um, those create search queries, and they feed into what people are looking for. And so I know we'll talk a little bit about Google My Business here in a little bit, but if that's how Google is thinking about it, we need to make sure that we have um, we're thinking about it in a, in a similar vein, right? So to uh, James's point earlier, if if I know that I am have a lot of uh, people who are looking for condos or interested in condos, that's where I should start creating some of my content. That's what I should be posting about. That's what I should be talking about. Um, so it's, and then, and then ultimately that's when Google would start picking up those signals. So when we think about for, for Google My Business, it's making sure that, that your information, again, is, is accurate, it's consistent um, across anywhere that you're online. We'll, we'll talk a lot about Google, as I said, but to James' point earlier, your Zillow profile, your Realtor.com profile, Yelp, any of those places uh, that you are going to be online, your Facebook page, all of that stuff wants to be consistent and then pointing back to ideally, you know, your website or uh, a consistent source. Um, and it's important because, you know, as I mentioned earlier, most people are, are turning to that smartphone as the first place to search and the first place to try and find people. So making sure that, that you're available to do that. Um, what makes Google My Business so powerful is, Michelle, earlier you said, you know, that, that Google is a little bit mysterious. Google My Business offers you the best chance to tell Google exactly how you want to be found, what you want to be known for, the best way to, to have all of that information. So, um, as we talked earlier, you know, have, being consistent minimizes um, customer confusion. They're like, well, is, is you know, I, I see two numbers for Josh. I'm not sure which one is accurate. So saying consistent, consistent across all of those is, is huge. Um, and then making sure that, that your office information and your name information is, is accurate and, the, and written the same way um, anywhere you are online. But as I said earlier, you know, you really do have, with Google My Business, you do have the power to control how Google um, displays uh, your information. And then there's also the added value of, of insights. Um, they've added more and more information into Google My Business. So you can see how many phone calls you're getting directly from Google My Business. You can see how many people are clicking through to your website, which is really powerful as well. Feel free to jump in or ask questions at any point. Okay. There are questions. There are yeah. questions coming in that are good. We can hold off for just a, a moment. Okay. But I just want no to problem. reiterate what, what Josh is talking about on a Google My Business profile you know, first of all, it's like handing out a business card with no information on it. If you don't have a Google My Business profile, it is free. It's easy to set up. You just have to be logged into Chrome under your, you do have to have a Gmail address. So sorry if you're holding out, if you're one of those last holdouts, um, you got to have a Gmail address, but it is how you get found. It legitimizes you as a business owner, a small business owner, as an individual, and he's going to talk more about that, but I just can't reiterate enough how you should definitely take advantage of that opportunity. Yeah, and to your point, Michelle, it's free. Um, it does right. take a little. It takes a little work to set up, but it is free. And so, what we want to walk you through is making sure that you're you're doing it in the right way, because especially for unique services like real estate, um, you guys are not just in one office, right? You service several areas. If I'm using a, a Denver example. Um, you know, I might be located in Denver. I might also sell houses in Centennial or Boulder, or I might even go as far as um, Winter Park or somewhere in the mountains. And, and I want to be found in all of those areas. So um, Google hasn't traditionally done a good job of, of figuring out service areas. They've always wanted, you know, for retail, it's easy. Here's where you're located. Here's your hours. Here's your phone number they're getting a little bit better. And this, op this offers a, a better opportunity for, for everyone in the real estate market. So um, you can talk about hybrid businesses, uh, or sorry, service area businesses where, where you serve 
And there's a couple points that we just want to make sure that you that you call out if you're going through this process and, and setting this up, or if you already have one set up, you can you can still make sure and go through. But it it mentions that like if you're an individual practitioner, i.e real estate agent, um, you should have your own dedicated business profile. If you've used one for a long time, if you've, you know, if you've been active uh, on a Facebook page, I would say continue to use that. I would say just update it a little bit so it does follow some of that consistency that uh, you might be using in other places. So that's, that's definitely something to consider. Uh, but if you have a lot of built up uh, reviews there, if you have a lot of um, equity, like search equity that you've already used, uh, for those pages, I would just say continue to use that and, and go ahead and, and update it. Um, the other thing I really want to call out, this is really specific for, for agents, is you want to make sure to do it uh, as a real estate agent, not the actual office itself, unless you are, you know, if you're a um, team manager or, or an office manager and you're setting it up for, for everyone, um, then go ahead and, and do that. But the, the example that, that they use, whoop, Sorry, the example that they use here, and I'm not sure if, if you can see it, but it, it mentions like Allstate Joe Miller um, there at the bottom. Um, that's for if Joe Miller is the only person in that office. So you want to uh, make sure that you're setting it up as an agent, and it looks a little bit differently when you're when you're going through to claim the listing. It's very likely that uh, your information or uh, information about you is already in Google My Business. It's just making sure that to Michelle's point earlier, you own it and you can set it up. So um, going through that that process and claiming your actual business is, is really important. Josh, do you mind if I jump in real quick and state Hold it on down. a little? Um, so I think for, if you're kind of wondering what he just said, simply the broker owner and the office location should claim their business first based off the physical location. I am at 123 Main Street and here's my information the name, Remax, defined properties, address, phone number, all of that. Agents within that office then should then claim their individual profiles, Google My Business profiles, as a service area, because then you get to pick where do you want to show up in those search results. That's where it gets a little more local. So that's the that's when he was saying Denver versus maybe Centennial. I'm physically located in Denver, my office is, but I want to show up in results because I serve the Centennial market. That is that difference. When you go in there and you check the box, the difference of service area means instead of the customers coming to me, now, yes, they meet you at your office likely, that is for the brokerage. The brokerage is the customers come to me, this is my address. As an agent, the concept is you go to your customer, so that's where you're picking the area of the, where do you want to show up for those results. That is the diff, that's an important distinction with Google of service area that you go to the customer, brokerage customers come to me. And that is an important part. So some of you might have claimed it and you're competing with your brokerage. That's where you're going to want to work together to get that fixed because you want to show up in the results that you should, not the brokerage necessarily. Um, I just wanted to call out that difference so that you understood kind of what that means. Um, we can take questions from there, but. No, that's, that's, a great, that's, that's a great clarification. So if we want to, if, there's, if there are questions coming up or anything more we need to clarify, because I think that may be one of the, more complex points that we talked through today. Right, and I just typed in the chat box, everyone, kind of the distinction between that. The brokerage is the real estate agency, and as an agent, you are a real estate agent. And the, the example of what James just talked about, we had that happen here in the Midwest region where an agent claimed the company as their own, um, their own profile, and yes, that was exactly what was happening. They were showing up as the business, and they are not the business owner. <laughs> so the broker owner is the only one that can claim the business as their own. Yeah, but and you get to use the address and that helps you a lot too. Mm -hmm. Josh, do you mind going back to that slide that had the Allstate example? Because this is also another point I want to call out. Yeah, for them. definitely. You see where it says acceptable? I, I don't know if you put your mouse down there, acceptable. Allstate semicolon Joe Miller. That is an example of the NAP data, right? The name, address, phone. So this is another weird thing that happens. And some people think it's us versus these channels. For a while, they used to suggest that you should have Remax dash semicolon hyphen your name on your Google My Business to show that you were part of that location. So whether it was Remax, Remax to find properties in your name. Then all of a sudden after that happened, they came back and said, eh, 
that's giving an unfair advantage to the brand. So then they wanted to de-brand it and make it just Joe Miller as your name. If that happens, don't panic. What you need to do though is keep in mind, if you did example there, it was Allstate semicolon Joe Miller, that would be the name on your social channels. That would be the name on your Zillow page. That would be the name on your realtor pages all over the place. If you need to make a change for some reason, you have to go back and rechange those. When Josh made a comment about reviews, this is another interesting one. And this gets sometimes agents, I've had some interesting um, conversations where they get upset about this. You're out there, but you create your Google My Business profile as a service area for tied to your brokerage. But what happens also is Google looks at those as unique businesses. So in the sense that if I move the business, I can move my profile with that, like as the brokerage. But oftentimes as a rule of thumb and a best practice, if you're on a service area side, you don't necessarily take all of those reviews and all of that content with you when you go. The proper thing is to close that location because they want the consumer to realize that this is now different. This is no longer the case. And you might reopen a new location, right? So there's some, there's just some nuances that happen if you're dealing with this before and you're like, hey, I was at a prior place and I can't get this thing moved over. I've submitted, I don't know how many tickets to Google support and they won't do it. You might have to close, market is permanently closed and reopen if they don't allow you to transfer that to your new location. So these are just some of those things I often get questions on from agents that are trying to deal with Google My Business. It's not a perfect system. It definitely has some frustrating points from my perspective and agents that have dealt with it before, but it is a really important thing to make sure that you're showing up because I love what Michelle said. It's like having a blank business card and handing it out. That's, that's silly. So you want to make sure you get it claimed correctly and set it all up. And I also have a, a tip. Don't register. There's a way that you kind of, um, what's the word, Josh? You uh, qualify. You uh, authenticate the Google My Business listing. Mm -hmm. Do it with the postcard. Don't do it with the phone number. The phone number is temporary and you'll keep getting these calls and then you tend to get the somebody from Google wants to sell you a bunch of stuff. Always do it with the mailed postcard. They will mail that postcard to your office location. Even though you're saying I'm in Centennial versus Denver, the postcard gets mailed to the physical location. You then get a number that you plug into your account and then that tends to last longer. And also if you have issues, you can have more controls than phone authorizations. And, right. and for the, a while, Google did not really support Google My Business. They're getting a little bit better to James's point, but yeah, there's still a gap there. So Josh, there's a lot of questions, but let's go ahead and have you go through the next couple slides because sure. we, might, we might answer some of those and then we'll come back to those. So thanks sure. everyone for all the, we knew we'd get a lot of questions on this session. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, and Thank keep, you. keep, Keep them coming, happy to get to them. Um, so as we were talking about a little bit earlier, the, that nuance between agency and agent. So I just wanna highlight here, when, you're, when you are setting your business, uh, your Google My Business profile up, you can select real estate agents versus agency. So I wanna make sure to, to call that out because then that leads you to be able to uh, select service area and give you some of those um, additional pieces as opposed to what James was saying of an actual physical location. Um, or you have the ability to, to update um, if you have one already claimed as, as James said too, verifying the address. Um, he said, he has, he has a couple slides ahead of me. Uh, just making sure to use the, the actual postcard. Um, is it, they'll, Google will prefer the postcard over the phone call and that'll help you last longer. Sometimes can help you get through some of those some of those issues. I just saw an interesting comment from Bree. Hi, Bree. Bree White is watching us on Facebook and uh, a lot of you know her. So thanks for being with us, Bree. She said she was Google audited once. A representative came to her office to ensure she was a real business. That's interesting. I was going to say that's a new one. I don't know that I had heard about that one before. Wow. We'd like to know more about that, Bree, or, or let Josh and James know about that. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, Brie is so public in what she does. I'm really surprised, you know, that that happens with yeah. her real estate business. Okay. Um, so just keep it moving. As we talked earlier uh, about the, the individual practitioners, um, James mentioned it, but multiple real estate agents obviously can work out of the same office, uh, but may service different locations. Um, so just making sure that you're setting it up, you know, the, the, uh, Remax office name, uh, John Smith, 
Jane Smith is a little bit more, um, it's more compliant. And then they've kind of, as James said, they've, they've changed a little bit their, their tune on that. We still recommend it. Um, but um, Josh, can I add one more comment? Fire away. I promise I'll be quiet after that. No, you're good. <laughs> No, um, this is the, my, uh, the opportunity on this big stage for us to talk about how to spell Remax. And <laughs> how do we spell Remax, everyone? It's all caps and a slash, no exceptions ever, <laughs> ever. <laughs> so I just cannot point that. And just so you know, in Google results pages, all caps really stands out on the page. I'm just it does. putting that out there. <laughs> It does, and on mobile too, because they only give you so much space in mobile. There used to be, you know, some some limits with page titles, and now it's a, you know, it's it's based on pixel size in your phone. Um, so taking up a little bit more, you know, I hate to say real estate on Google, but I'm going to say it. Uh, real estate on Google is never is never a bad thing for sure. Um, so if you and if you have a, um, an account already set up. Um, this is an example of if it's if it's already in there and, and you already go into that and, and um, have already set it up and been using one. Um, this is an example from from one that we have in, in New York. Um, there's the ability to add service area right right there, um, and then you can adjust you know where you you know the areas that you serve and the areas that you guys um, help out with. And there's a lot of other great information in there in case you haven't gone into your Google My Business profile uh, recently. Um, I'll talk a little bit about insights and, and reviews as well, because uh, those are huge places to, to get a lot of information and, and um, put a lot of information that, that will ultimately help you with, with SEO. Um, but just wanna make sure there's no other questions or, or anything. Um, there's one question from Elkie. She says, I have real estate agency on her profile. Uh-oh, <laughs> uh, real estate agent is not an option. Real estate agents or consultants should be an option, shouldn't it? That's, um, I'm trying to find that. I'm trying to find that question. Um, the is real estate agency, as long as the checkbox for service area and customers going to the customer, it should be fine. It's based off of the, you just want to, as long as the brokerage has agency claimed on the physical address. Well, so in this example, in Google keep changing. This yeah. example that Josh has on the screen does say real estate agents consultant. So that's why I was wondering um, too. They keep changing them. So it depends on where they're at. I've even noticed different categories pop up in different areas. And the reason being is the search behavior differs by geography. Right, and you can also have multiple. You can have more than one uh, category too. So if you wanna have um, a few of those to make sure it covers things like real estate agents, real estate consults as well, um, there is an opportunity to have more than one. Just to James's point, because it does change so frequently and they're continually adding in uh, things in there. Okay, All right, you may continue. All right. Um, no, it's always, always better to have a conversation about it than just me talking through. So the other thing that, that I really just want to hit on is um, insights. And uh, this is this is an example. So in insights, this is a little bit more visibility than, than really Google has given in the last few years. You can actually go in, you can see, um, you know, you, you have the ability to toggle how, how customers search for your business. Um, and you can see um, if they're using branded or non-branded terms, you know, if they're using Remix, if they're using your specific name, or if they're looking for something that's a little bit more general, like real estate consultant, real estate agent. Um, you can also see how many calls you've gotten from your Google My Business page, people that have, have searched for it and then clicked the, uh, the tap to call. You can see how many people have uh, tried to get to your office or, or possible location um, with driving directions. So there's a huge amount of, of information that you can get through insights. This is really just the, the top of the page. And if you scroll down, you can see actions for the last year and just see um, you know, how people are engaging and, and what that looks like. And to me, what's really powerful about that, right, is it's a great barometer of, of how you're doing and, and a way to keep an eye on it. So if you um, maybe just set up your page and you came in and saw how you did in your first month, um, you could check that six months later as you, as you hopefully have implemented some of the things that we've talked about and and made sure that the name, address, phone number information is consistent. If you've put a little bit more information into your profile, 
you can compare how you are in, in six months down the road and hopefully you know you've seen a little bit of, a little bit of growth um, if not you know there's additional things that you can try and test out and, and adjust uh, to hopefully see some of that uplift with with SEO, but um, it's just a, a really powerful tool that, that not a lot of people know about, leverage, use, so can't recommend that enough. Awesome. Yeah. And I'll, I'll keep right on going. Um, as we've we've hit on this a couple times, making sure that the information is, is accurate, um, making sure it's you owning your information. Um, and then the other thing I just wanted to... Um, I think we've talked a lot about this, especially that example down there at the bottom, you know, one, two, three South Main Street uh, versus one, two, three full South, the full full words written out, making sure that that is uh, consistent everywhere uh, is really important. But I wanna make sure we get to um, reviews because I know that this is one that um, a lot of people have reviews, a lot of people have uh, opinions on reviews. So I just wanted to make sure to hit on this. Um, real quick is the, the thing that's really powerful with reviews is it's a good way to engage with customers, get feedback, everything like that. The best thing is there's there's good and bad, right? Even engaging with the bad reviews is, is also a really great opportunity uh, for your business to overall have a positive moment. So this is an example. Um, what you see on the top is a five-star review, right? These guys are awesome. They're outstanding. My daughter, uh, um, and, and then you have the next one down there that says terrible service, poor communication and unreliable. That was huge about that is they took the time to respond to it because that shows you, especially in this, in this industry that we're in, um, you guys all work so hard to maintain your reputation, make sure that you're giving the most to your clients and possible clients when you can. And I think to me, this is huge because, you know, it, it says, I'm sorry, you had a bad experience with our firm. I think there were some, some miscommunications. Um, and so it's, it's a really great opportunity to show that you still care, even though it might've been a bad interaction. You guys, I think that's something, just remember, this is a human, this is a belly to belly business, right? And a lot of times I think people are afraid to ask for reviews because they don't understand them or they don't want that negative review. But there's tons of research and uh, that has been done on this. If you have a perfect five-star rating, you're likely not going to build the trust with that, with the consumer and the general public, because it feels gay. Right. The reality is when you've got a four plus something, that's good. And you're never going to be perfect. But to Josh's point, if whether good or bad, always respond, always show that appreciation for providing positive feedback. And when you have a negative one, try to take the conversation online, but just showing the fact that you're, that you care, that you're following up on it, that you really take your, your business, your service, your values seriously, that is going to go a long way. And it's not anything to panic about when you do get a nasty review, or in some cases you get reviews that aren't even yours. That happens a lot. People go on there and they'll start blasting someone and you're like, this isn't even me. Just take it offline, make the comment and go forward with your day and don't panic. It is okay, but it's just make sure to respond to each and every one that you get. And I could just add on this too, everyone. So Google favors, Google my business profiles that have reviews, just period. You will, you can show up higher than, a, and if there's a top producer in your area at another company and you're new to the business, but you have four or five reviews and they have zero, you are going to show up before them because Google will favor that. Um, the, the teams and the Remax agents out there that are doing really well with Google My Business rankings that have reviews, they're not asking for those reviews just once. They're asking for them multiple times. Uh, Scott Rogers, I want to call you out. I don't even know if you're watching or anyone from your team from Peoria, Illinois. You do an amazing job with your profiles. I know for a fact they ask four times for a Google review, twice before the closing, twice afterwards. So it's talk about consistency, that's important, but Google is everything. And then like Josh said, it's important that you respond to them right away, good or bad, it's good to have a response and acknowledge those for sure. Yeah, exactly. And I think it just shows, you know, to James' point earlier, it shows that human element. Everyone has bad experiences um, and it's just an opportunity to, to, you know, try and make it right or try and give a little bit of an explanation. Um, and then one of the questions that, that just came up in the chat, Karen set me up perfectly, is, is what kind of videos 
um, or uh, pictures do you, you suggest putting on your Google My Business? It's really, for Google My Business, it's, it's um, stuff that, that relates to your business, right? Sometimes it might be um, a picture of a home that, that may be a listing. It may be if you're in an office, pictures of the actual office, what they can see, what the user might be able to expect to see inside or outside. Um, you see that, you know, when there are more photos and there's more content for people to get a feel for what they can expect when they're there, or, or working with you, that uh, it, they typically drive 42% uh, percent more driving directions and, and 35 more clicks to the website. So it's a huge opportunity for, for you to showcase what you do, uh, a little bit more about yourself um, that ultimately you know, drives more business because people engage with those a, a little bit more. And don't be afraid to have fun with this. It doesn't have to yeah. be, just, you tend to just puke real estate stuff at people. <laughs> and put personality, put who you serve. If, like I've got people that are like, I'm a, I want to be the dog realtor in the area. And I want to serve all the people with pets. Show it, show your personality, attract people to your business, attract people to who you are and how you can help them navigate buying and selling a home. I mean, it doesn't have to always be home, home, home and bedrooms and bathrooms right. and real estate speak. Great advice. All right. Um, By the way, everyone, I did put, put a link in the chat box for those of you on Zoom to directly to the Google My Business support portal. Lots of information there. Yeah, yeah. Lots, you can actually call them. You might have to pay for support. I'm not 100%, but you know what? It's worth it because this is your calling card on Google. It doesn't get any more important than that. Yeah, and, and to, to James's point, you uploading some of your own stuff would, would go a lot further um, just to show who you are. A little bit, a little bit of humor um, is not a bad thing at all. They updated their content policy recently, um, so they're a little bit more stringent about other, uh, other people's content, so I would just say make it your own. Um, and then obviously the world that we live in is a little bit different than it was 12 months ago, right? So making sure that you have those COVID uh, considerations, they're one thing that, that they recently added to Google My Business. So um, whether that's timely updates about, you know, your office closures or when you'd be able to do, um, if virtual tour, uh, home tours are, are an option, just making sure that that information is on there. And obviously, you know, safety and hygiene practices are, are never a bad thing uh, right now with, with some of the concern there. Um, so just make sure you, you're going through that step as well. Um, and again, updated hours. I know some people's uh, hours of business may, may have changed for, for some of the actual physical locations um, or, or just a quick description. Um, so that's a lot of Google My Business. I don't know if we wanna make sure we hit on any other questions that, that may be coming up or if you're getting other, any other questions, Michelle. There's quite a few actually. Let's just okay. kind of, we'll go through a few of them, and because uh, we want, we will be running over. I we already knew that we would. So if okay. you can't, if you can't stay with us the whole hour, everyone, this is being recorded. It's available. It'll be available on demand on the Remax Integra US Facebook page, as well as I will be sending out to those of you on Zoom the YouTube link, and it'll be on our channel. Um, yeah. So, so real quick. Yeah, I'll, I'll do these real quick and we can we can make sure and hit on all of those questions. Um, sure. A few additional tools, obviously, if you haven't been to Market Place, feel free to feel free to check it out. Um, and then um, Megaphone. Wanted to talk through Megaphone real quick and, and some of the pieces that uh, you can get to for Google My Business. Obviously, a lot of the stuff that, that we've talked about is, is more of the organic side, um, putting up... Um, you know, making sure your phone, making sure it's SEO friendly, um, name, address, phone number. Um, the other thing that you can do if, you know, this seems like a lot and, and very overwhelming, um, you can use Megaphone. Uh, you can use it to use, you know, put additional dollars for, for a specific listing if you want. Or this is also an example for, for Becky. Um, she has her Google My Business profile set up through uh, megaphone with the with the pro plus um so you she can see how many reviews uh she can see how many searches and, and actions she has on that so i just wanted to call that out as as an additional option if this seems like a lot that's that might be an easy way to um to leverage that, that you guys and this is one of those important pieces for automation right if you are a student and you want to dig into this there's tons of support obviously hopefully this um, presentation day helps but it's a lot of work if you don't have time or interest, 
that's where we're bringing in options where you can purchase this option through Megaphone to be able to handle your Google My Business and help you with your posting and help you building that presence. And then I think I saw a question of what's the difference of advertising versus this SEO stuff. This would be that. GMB is your long-term play. You can run some ads to get some exposure as well. Where do I want to show up in results? How do I want to drive traffic? Um, how do I want to get clicks to my site? Whatever that might be. So this is where we're really taking a hard look at these tools and what you guys have with Megaphone um, can do just that. If you're like, hey, this is great. My head is spinning and I don't want to deal with it. Consider the buy through Megaphone. Yeah. And if not, hopefully you learn some tricks to get it set up yourself. If not, hopefully this has been helpful. Um, yeah. So yeah, in review, I mean, typically users will start their, their search online. Um, my Google My Business, I, I, I think I might steal Michelle's quote about a, a blank business card because that was that was great. Um, you know, as, a, as an easy place to just say who you are, what you're about, um, and make sure to claim yourself um, and leverage reviews, the, the good and the bad. Awesome. Thank you so much, Josh. Um, let's yeah. go through a few of these questions now. Fire away. Stacy is very excited, has a lot of questions. Uh, Stacy in Kentucky. Hi, Stacy. She, uh, so first of all, once again, I did paste in the link a couple times for the support portal for, for Google My Business. We may not have all the answers. We may not be able to help you. We can't help you with setup. Um, there's a lot of answers there. And don't forget about YouTube. There are a ton of videos on YouTube, everyone, on how to set up your Google My Business profile. There you go. All the, the yeah. links will include that. But Stacy's asking, how many times do you need to get recognized in order to rank higher for Google? There's no magic bullet for that one. That's one that's yeah. a little bit of that, that uh, box. And to James's <laughs> point earlier, the more information that you have that's consistent and the more uh, the more you're using the same information everywhere, the better chance, right? If you're if you're you have a lot of one-offs of of different information, of different uh, phone numbers, uh, office names slightly spelled different, it's gonna be harder for Google to find that consistency and ultimately point people to you. So I would just say making sure that you're consistent wherever you are. And I For think sure. another thing to keep in mind is what are you dealing with locally? Are you in a highly competitive market with tons of agents, tons of volume, tons of deals? And start doing searches on Google itself. How many are showing up in that map in that three pack at the top of the page? How many search results are showing up? If you're in a more rural area, you might be able to do a little bit and dominate the page, right? Or if you're highly competitive, it just takes a little more effort. I think a lot of people are like, what's the trick? What's the, what's the tool to use? We have brand resources that most um, like agents aren't gonna have access to just from a cost perspective and access point, but start doing searches inside of Google. And when it starts pre-populating a list, those are the terms and search and phrases that people are looking for. The longer tail form keywords, you're gonna be able to likely rank better and quicker on than short form because those are highly competitive, lots of dollars going out from an advertising perspective um, or if you don't see anything, there's also a way you could create your own if you start promoting that as well. So there really isn't a, you know, a single answer, but it really does depends on where you're at and what you're dealing with. Thank you. This is a really good one from Todd. Todd in Canada. Hi, Todd. He's asking, can you combine multiple Google My Business accounts? He serves three provinces in Canada. He was told last year only within 100 miles. Now, this is just my answer and, and feel free to add your own. I think if you're that far apart, you're best creating separate Google business profiles for each location. And, and this is good for those of you that have multiple office locations as well, because you want to think hyper local. You want to focus on that local community using the right keywords within that area. But if there's a general rule like this, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about it. So Josh or James, do you have anything to add to that? They should be individual to the location. However, if you're a multi-office owner and it doesn't matter where you're located, you can create a child parent relationship. So if it was Remax defined properties at 123 Main Street or Remax region, you can create child offices and even your service area locations can be children of that location. So from an administrative perspective, you log into Google, you see it all in once. If you do it individually, you have to probably have different emails, different some contact to make it unique because each of those locations would be different. So it really depends on his strategy and what he's going after and what he's dealing with. Um, but each GMB listing should be specific to the area it serves, not trying to span across 
and they don't technically combine, they would just be rolled up underneath. Yeah, I don't know that I have any more to add to that. With with the distance that you're looking at, I think that would probably be the best way to best way to go. See, I just learned something new about the child parent relationship there from my office. I love it. And I'm when you log into GMB to do that, someone's like, "Well, how do I do that?" You'll log into your account. You'll see your listing you've already claimed. You add. Right. There's an option. Is it still say add locations, Josh? Yeah, manage manage locations. So you'll look for a thing that says manage locations, and you add a new location. And if it's a brokerage. You can add it based off the location of the address. Otherwise, you can, and this is where it might help too, you can add locations for service areas. So if a brokerage wanted to do this for their agents, they could offer that. Or maybe the agents already have um, a locations that they've rolled into or that they've created for their service area. Then they can share access. So make the brokerage a manager of their location to roll up as a child. What's nice about that is if the brokerage was say doing any search campaigns, this is where the paid side and the SEO comes in. If the brokerage is running search campaigns, any of those child locations from a search result perspective, so maybe I'm looking for real estate in, just type in the term real estate um, homes for sale, all of those location extensions, the individual agents and the brokerage could start to serve up as an extension on the advertising unit. And that's some of the advantages of rolling the service area and other locations as children to the main account. Love it. If you some of your minds, we can talk about it later, but it's. <laughs> no, that's great. This is a really good point yeah. from Stacy. If as at the brokerage level, and let's face it across the country, there's a lot of your Remax franchise names that are similar to one another. So if you are Remax Center, a Realty Center, and then there's Remax Center Realtors or, you know, what very similar names like that, the best way to distinguish yourself is to, again, Focus on your hyper-local content. You're going to be in your own state. There's a pretty good chance there's not going to be another one of those in your own state. That's kind of a general rule. Um, there's really no way across the board to distinguish yourself um, just other than your own local content. Um, I don't. I can't think of anything else on that one. Yep. No, I think you, yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. Is making sure that it, that it's consistent and, and it is your actual information. For sure. Uh, let's see, some questions about service areas. Is it easy to change a service area if I've already set it up? Um, I believe that field is editable, is it not? Yeah, okay. you should be able to go in there and there should be a little pencil right next to right next to service area if you have it. Um, you can take, you know, if you're no longer in some of those service areas, you can delete a few um, and you can, you can edit it right there when you're logged in. The for same sure. with categories. I saw a question on categories. Just mm -hmm. look for the little pencil icon when you go into your account. That's where you should be able to edit this stuff. Now, when you edit it, it might require another verification as well. And if that happens, don't panic. It just means you've got to go back to re-verify yourself for whatever you're changing. Yep. Sure. A lot more questions and comments about choosing sales rep or consultant versus broker. And, um, you know, as James mentioned, it's ever changing. I, it wasn't that long ago. I remember you could choose real estate agents <laughs> just a few months ago. So you're going to have to kind of look through some of those choices there, but the question from suggestion. Yes, go ahead. Uh, what I would do is if you're not sure on which to use, do a search on your laptop desktop and do a search on your phone and see what comes up and see if those are competitors that you want to be in the mix of. It'll help you start to identify where you might want to be or where an opportunity is. Maybe you're not seeing certain competitors with some of those terms. And you can add multiples to it, but that's that's a really easy way to figure out what do I use? Because again, it's so different. All of this is so hyper-local. Like if you think about a condo in New York, it's different than a condo in the Midwest versus like what typically would be like an owned apartment in some areas. That nuance, that vernacular we use really varies by market, even within the same state. Like I've noticed cities and counties and zip codes all have different results. So just do a quick Google search and see what shows up and what you want to get yourself into. Okay. Uh, let's see, is it better from Dinesh? I hope I'm saying your name right. I apologize. Is it better to have a domain name with personal identifier or domain name with the geographic area we are serving? Does the specific domain name make a difference with algorithms? We didn't get into Google Trends, Josh, but maybe this would be. A good I know uh, that's kind of like six of uh, six of one, <laughs> half dozen of the other. I would I would probably recommend location name just because it's more likely to have 
more people doing those searches than your actual name. Um, but that won't be the end all be all. It might, it might help you get early gains quicker. Um, but if you've been doing it for a while, it would probably net net all be the same. It's not just the, uh, that Josh just said something super important. I want to make sure you understand it'll help you get quicker results, but you have to think about the content on your page, the meta description, the data, even the images you're loading. So if you loaded a picture, say you're going after San Diego, um, homesforsale.com and you load a picture up, if it was San Diego homes for sale, dot JPG, meta description with that copy on the home page, links out to it, backlinks about San Diego homes for sale, like that's all stuff that's important. It's not just the domain. And consistent, yeah. Making sure that you're gonna do that, not just the one time, you know, push for one month, you're gonna to continue to do that. Definitely. Um, and I see there have been some questions about SEO words. Please look up Google Trends to see yeah. what the popular search terms are in your area for the last 90 days, for the last year. Uh, Mary has a really good question. I work with two Remax brokerages in two different states. How can I be listed with both offices? Would this be simply in her bio talking about that? Or is there, what can she do from a location perspective? So it's really claim GMB for each location with a little, there's gotta be something unique. Okay. You need to be a little different. And that's where if you have one, create another location underneath that main account. Okay, sounds good. Uh, thank you for that. All right, let's see. Uh, Trudy is saying, I already claim my Google My Business. My name is currently Trudy Wilson Broker at Remax Eastern Realty. Should I just change it to Trudy Wilson? No, yeah, <laughs> do not do, take it, capitalize on the Remax brand, leave it exactly like it is. No, it's a, it's a good question, Trudy. We understand why you're asking, but no, always take advantage of the opportunity to shout from the rooftops you're with Remax for sure. Now that said, Michelle, I think the other thing you gotta think about is your other channels. If there's yeah. Hello Realtor, Facebook, Instagram, True. all these others, and it was just Trudy Wilson, mm. if you don't go change that on all of those, that could, now whether you want to or not, that's your choice from your own strategy. But if you don't, if you're looking for that consistency so that if someone does a search and you dominate page one, that name should be everywhere. And it, to James's point, somebody asked here, is, is Yelp uh, Google My Business's portal? It's not, but to what James said earlier, if you're on Yelp as well, you want to be consistent with the same thing that you're going to be on, on Google My Business. So the same phrasing, same information, same, same everything. That tells me I think we confused them, Josh. I want to clarify. So search engines. Google is a search engine that has Google My Business. Those search engines are out there crawling all of these websites. And some of these sites have really high site authority, like a Facebook, like a Yelp, like a Zillow, like a realtor.com, like a remax.com. All of these sites get crawled. And when they start finding common search terms, common, that's like H1, if some of you heard like an H1 and H2 metadata copy and all that, that content, if it, they find that consistency, they'll start pulling it back and start ranking all of those links. So then somebody did a search for Trudy Wilson and they start seeing the same thing across all of these, Trudy Wilson can dominate page one search results if that consistency is there on Google's search engine, including the Google My Business listing. Okay, great. Thank you so much. These are really good questions. I'm looking to see if we have any new questions we haven't covered. Uh, let's see. Yes, you're going to get a copy of the recording and the presentation. And Yelp, yes. Let's see, we talked about that. How to link a Google business page to a Facebook business page. Um, hi, Nicole. That's simply in your bio, or excuse me, in your profile edit, right? You just connect your Facebook and your Instagram and everything else. Yeah, you want to, but I'd say the link should go to your site more important than linking Facebook to Google. That's my opinion. I would agree. Website. And usually those platforms want to keep you in that platform. Facebook wants to keep you in Facebook. Google wants to keep you in Google. So to James's point, I think pushing to a website would probably be the best, best use there. Definitely. Uh, let's see. If you are an agent on a team within a brokerage, what is the best way to input the name? You mentioned putting the brokerage name first, and then do you put the team name? And is it long? Is it, are you able to do that? What do you suggest? I, I do this all the time. So A, it's gonna depend on what your local requirements are. I don't know all of the city and county jurisdictions on how teams can and cannot promote themselves. So make sure you're following that first. 
then following any guidelines for your advertising with the brokerage. So in some cases, it could be just the team name with the agent team member's name. Sometimes it's brokerage name, team name, plus that. And then you get into issues where it's too long. So teams are a little bit of a challenge, but I think that's where you might come up with an approach where if it's tied to, if say the brokerage is more important than the team name, the team member might have to tie themselves to the brokerage name. It really just depends on what your MLS and local rules are. Yeah. Right, exactly. Uh, Marcus is saying this seems overwhelming and we knew it would, which is why it's, you can, we recommend you watch the recording back and pause as you need to. But again, I've been pasting in several times a direct link to the support portal for Google My Business, tons and tons of resources, video tutorials on YouTube, um, but take this in small steps. The first step is just creating your Google My Business profile, or if you've already done that, going back and editing and making these suggestions that James and Josh are sharing with you. Um, there's not one particular person here at Remax that you can outsource the SEO piece to, but we do have some approved suppliers. Uh, Josh did mention some of those in there that can certainly help you uh, with some of the SEO work. Um, there might be someone within your own brokerage, depending upon what your makeup is of your brokerage that can help too, yep. or talk to your broker owner. They may already be using someone at the office level that maybe you could tap into. Yep. Okay. And don't forget about Megaphone. And the nice thing is yes. they can help you walk through it and set it up for you and you learn. And then if you learn from them and wanna do it, take it over. Right. Oh, right. I'll keep doing sure. um, let's see, Stephanie's saying, if we already have a personal Gmail account, Account, should we use it or is it better to create one specific to your real estate activities? Stephanie, if you're using a Gmail address as your primary email address with your clients, then that's the one you should link all of your Google apps and your profile and everything to. It's one that's already known. You're going to be checking it most often. Reviews will get, you'll get alerted on reviews and everything else there. Um, I, that, that one is the uh, unless for some reason you're not using it, if you're using your own domain or something like that, but um, that would be our best suggestion. Yep. Should each team member have a separate Google My Business? James, Josh? So again, I think it depends on your requirements and what you're allowed to do, but yeah, it's another way to show up as in the service area, just like any agent in an office. Because maybe the team serves different parts of the country or they represent different, like I know some teams do buyer versus seller, so they can create their profile geared towards those different groups or what they do. Now I wouldn't do like, if they're not dealing with the forward facing consumer per se, and maybe they're more of a support function of the agents within the team, I wouldn't necessarily get a Google My Business for that person. Okay. Uh, Elkie's asking if I cannot change the real estate agency, should I delete my current profile and create another? I, I would, would contact not. support. As yeah. I was say, I would not recommend would deleting. Delete my profile. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pasting the link in again for you, Elkie, to yep. the support portal. Yeah. Yeah. Don't delete and try to start over. I saw someone had a comment in the chat box. I apologize. I forget who it was that said, I... I have been waiting for a month for my profile to get verified. I guess the first step, like James said, is getting that postcard sent to you in the mail to verify you with that code. But beyond that, again, reach out to their support if you think it's been in a, an extremely long time. Uh, we don't yeah, know. Try and have them resend it. That's not uncommon. Okay. So and I'm if sorry. it doesn't get verified, don't panic either. It's still out there. It's just not, you want to get, you'll get there eventually. Again, it's not a perfect system. Yes. Yeah. And we're getting comments like I've been paying big bucks for Google presence <laughs> to external vendors. This has been helpful. We're glad that we can help out. That was our objective. Uh, let's see, did I miss anything? I think I saw something about Canada. Um, Megaphone right now, there's some, we're working on a feed. So my guess is by mid year, we'll start getting something. So right now the Megaphone kind of easy button for Google and some of this is US specific, but all of the content we shared in terms of how it works and what you can do in Google, that is universal. Yep. Okay, well, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, some final statements from our panelists. If you wanna stop the screen share, Josh, and we'll make our final wrap up here for this amazing session. I'm so excited. I was really looking forward to this and it exceeded my expectations. So James and Josh, I. 
I learned some new things. I'm sure we all learn new things, but what are your final words of advice for Google and SEO for the real estate professional in 2021? What are some of the top one or two things they should be doing? We'll start with you, James. I'm going to say, remember who you serve. It's about the consumer, not ourselves, not our brokerage, not our team per se. And if you keep that in mind and focus on content, photos, the descriptions, and think about how you're connecting those, all those channels you have back to your website, you're going to, you're setting yourself up for success to get more traffic, get more calls, get more leads and really attract that consumer. Okay. There's still call outs for your hidden talents too, by the way. <laughs> uh, so Josh, what would your work final word? I would be? just say consistency. I know we talked about it a lot already, but uh, I would say consistency for, for a name, address, phone number, making sure that that is the, what you're using. What, once you've decided what you're, what you're using, using that everywhere. Sounds really good. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so very much, everyone. Thank you so much, James and Josh, for sharing your expertise Brown, and your yes. time. And, and say hello to everyone at World Headquarters for all of us here in Remax land. Uh, thanks, everyone. The recording will be sent out. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Be well, thanks, everyone. everybody. Appreciate you, you being on. Bye. Thank you.